Greetings, I am Enraged Eggplant and welcome to Dungeons and Gerbs. In this video, I will tell you how I would make a D&D monk in Gerbs. The monk is probably the most infamous D&D class. Some people claim that it is underpowered, and others claim that it has no place in a traditional Europe-centric D&D setting. But what is it like uh, to play a monk in Gerbs? It really depends on the game in question. Generally speaking, GURPS combat makes playing a martial artist really fun, especially if you're using all the stuff from GURPS martial arts. However, some aspects of playing an unarmed fighter will hurt. By default, punching something hard will hurt you too. Fighting unarmed against an armed enemy may turn any successful parry made by the enemy into a crippling injury to your hand or foot. Parrying the weapons will be difficult as well. You're simply screwed unless you either fight very carefully and, most importantly, cooperate with your allies, or take certain advantages and items that will make fighting armed opponents easier. First, you can improve your punching damage and prevent the possibility of hurting yourself by using brass knuckles, a cestus, or something similar. Heavy boots will do the same for your kicks. If you want to go further, you may purchase your limbs as strikers. This will let them deal more damage and act as weapons for the purpose of parrying. This is a big improvement, but it is not realistic. However, you can always justify it as a supernatural ability and add the power modifier. Second, if you have high combat skill levels, then you should not only focus on positioning, but also on deceptive attacks to prevent the possibility of a very painful parry. Try to approach your opponent from behind or from the offhand side. Also, there is something important that will make your monk feel very different from its D&D counterpart. Grappling in GURPS is both strong and fun. If you manage to land a grab on an armed enemy without getting cut or impaled in the process, feel free to wrestle him down and he probably won't be able to do much, effectively at least. However, getting there could be difficult, and most armed fighters should have at least uh, some grappling training too. But you don't have to be an unarmed fighter to play a monk. There's a plethora of various weapons in GURPS low tech or GURPS martial arts that are good for monks. Aside from the Kusaris, Nunchakos and other monk weapons, Consider fighting with a staff. Staves have decent damage, good reach, and are excellent at pairing, and also are cheap and easy to improvise. Staves are great. Aside from all that, there's a certain advantage that pretty much was made for monks. Trained by a master. It is quite expensive, but uh, one of the popular house rules made by PK is to allow taking it with the unarmed only, minus 40% limitation. This advantage halves your penalties for rapid strikes, which nicely imitate the monk's flurry of blows class feature, and also allows you to take certain cinematic skills. Most of these cinematic skills are in GURPS basic set, but most of them have expanded rules in the GURPS martial arts. The latter book also introduces several new cinematic skills, Hypnotic Hands, Lizard Climb, Precognitive Parry, and Sensitivity. These skills are very flavorful, but they usually are considered a bad point investment. I'll mention the alternative later in the video. In any case, whether you're playing an unarmed fighter, grappler, or a monk with a weapon, you should read the technique section of GURPS martial arts. There's a lot of fun stuff there. While you're at it, why not specialize in a style? Purchasing traits as a part of a style will add a lot of flavor to your character, but there's not many generic fantasy styles in the book. You might want either to rename the real-world styles, come up with your own, or, for example, use the converted D&D styles from my blog. The D&D monk also has many supernatural abilities. The power source is called Qi, but in GURPS it's usually called Qi. By default, the Qi power modifier is a minus 10% limitation that requires you to take a minus 10 point disadvantage. Most often disciplines of faith, monasticism or mysticism, or a comparable major wow. 
Should you neglect this, your power fails you the first time you call upon it under stress. To restore it, you must take 1d days to rebalance your chi. Until you do, you feel drowsy. That's cool, but I think that there is a mistake here. Gerg's power states that the chi powers can be neutralized with the pressure secret skills. It also states that if there are countermeasures to a power, including a cinematic skill, then it should get a minus 5% discount. So shouldn't chi be a minus 15% power modifier then? I found this not long ago, and now I'm treating it as a minus 15% power modifier. Gerb's powers also suggest to use the following special rules for chi powers. Abilities and exertion, coordinated attacks, crippled abilities, defending with powers, power techniques, skills enhancing abilities, trading fatigue for effect, trading fatigue for skill. Those who possess a chi ability and a cinematic martial arts skill that covers similar ground, for example, invisibility and invisibility art, super jump and flying leap, etc., get plus 4 when they use the ability to enhance the skill, and may roll against the skill instead of the attribute to use the ability. The GM should also consider letting power blow replace will for extra effort with chi powers. Finally, body control and meditation might stand in for HT and will, respectively, when checking for crippled chi abilities or powers. In all cases, only use the skill if it's better than the usual score. Chi is not a single power, but a power source. The appropriate powers are anti-psi, body control, chi projection, also known as bioenergy, ESP, fear, healing, and taint. For body control, the talent is replaced with inner balance, and for chi projection, the talent is replaced with forceful chi. Forceful Chi also acts as a talent for Chi-based imbuements, and Chi-based imbuements themselves are HT-based. I've converted all the standard class features of the D&D monk as Chi abilities in a post that I will link in the description. But why limit yourself to Chi? D&D has many examples where monk characters seem to be better off using magical, psionic, or even divine powers to represent their abilities. I also recommend you to check the Chi Sorcery article from Pyramid 3 105. That one has an alternative Chi power modifier and has all the cinematic Chi skills built with advantages. You might prefer that version of them. If you'd like a template, you can use the 250 point martial artist template from Girls Dungeon Fantasy 1 Adventurers, the 75 point War Dancer template from Girls Fantasy, or the 150-point monk template of my make that I will link in the description. And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.